Hi, Natsakima here. In the last week's episode, I have explained what are sender constraint tokens. But you may wonder where these are going to be used. In RFC 6749, which is the base spec for Auth 2.0, it doesn't seem to appear. Well, really? Let's check it out. There are several types of auth flows, but what is called authorization code grant or code flow is by far the most popular one. It goes like this. A user asks for a service from a web-based auth client through a browser. The browser sends a request to the client and the auth client then creates the authorization request. This request is sent to the authorization server through the browser redirect. Then the authorization server authenticates the user, shows what is asked by the client and asks the user permission. Upon the user's action that confirms the user permission, means the sender constraint token called authorization code, which is bound to the client ID. Send the authorization request that includes code back to the client's callback URI, redirects URI. Upon receiving the call, the client sends it to the authorization server's token endpoint. This request is called token request. Token request is an authenticated request. The client must authenticate itself using client ID and client secret. The authorization server then verifies that call is associated with the authenticated client and returns the access token and the refresh token. Access token in RFC 6749 is a bearer token, while refresh token is a sender constraint token in general. The clients use the access token to get the protected resource, runs business logic on them, and finally returns success to the user. Now you know that even in RFC 6749 alone, we use two kinds of sender constraint tokens, although it's not stated so. If you look further, there are places that use sender constraint access token as well. Banks in UK are a typical example of it. For these, you can search FAPI to find out more about it. And that was all in two minutes. See you next time.